Every year for the last couple of years that I have been uploading videos onto this platform, I have done a year-end review where I discuss all the classes that I took over the last 12 months, my highlights from those classes, and my goals for the upcoming year. So let's get started. The first class that I took in 2023 was with Ernest Langdon. And if you've ever tried to get into one of his classes, then you probably know they can be quite elusive. Ernest doesn't really teach classes very often. And when he does, they tend to fill up really quickly. So when I saw that there were actually two slots open in a class that was coming really close to my area at the time, I went ahead and snagged both of them up, one for my husband and one for myself. Ernest's class was probably one of the most enjoyable classes that I've taken. And that that was not because it quite literally poured the entire second day. I really enjoyed this class because of the laid back yet safe environment that was created amongst the students, paired simply with just the amount of ground that we covered in two days. Most of the classes that I've taken over the last couple of years have been primarily shooting skill focused with a little drizzle of tactics mixed in. And then this class was sort of an even balance that leaned a little bit more in the direction of the tactic side of things. So as you can imagine in this class, I learned about things that I'd never really been exposed to before, like shooting at night. Most of the night shooting classes that I've seen on the interwebs are basically the same thing as shooting in the daylight. Everyone turns on their weapon mounted lights and shoots at targets that are just completely unobstructed and very well lit. And in my case, I don't carry a weapon mounted light and I don't really have any intention of ever doing so, uh, at least not in a day-to-day -day context. And in this class, Ernest lit up our targets with a number of different kind of light perspectives to simulate backlight Lighting, street lighting, low light, and more, and walked us through a variation of techniques for shooting with a handheld light, which as you can imagine is a lot more applicable to my personal context as I do carry a handheld light and don't have a weapon mounted light. On day two, we tackled yet another skill I'd never practiced before, which was shooting from behind cover. And boy, did I learn a thing or two about height over bore. If you don't know what I mean, when you're shooting at something from behind a barricade, you may be able to physically put your dot on your target, but your barrel is physically lower than your sighting system and may actually be in line with your barricade. Yes, I did in fact shoot my barricade once or twice. <laughs> That same month, I also had the opportunity to attend the Range Master Tactical Conference in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I've attended conference style learning opportunities like that before, but TACON was so much to take in for the first time. There were so many outstanding courses being offered all weekend. There was an ongoing pistol shooting competition throughout the course of the entire weekend and constant friendships being made. So at TACON, I was able to fit in a single live fire class with Gabe White and the rest of the classes uh, I chose to take for hands-on style or lecture learning. So I'll just go ahead and read you guys the classes that I took because there are many names. Uh, so technical skills for tactical success with Gabe White, the aftermath with Dobb, Gelhaus, and Weems, bridging the gap, attacking clinch with Larry Lindemann, uh, the experiential learning lab with Craig Douglas. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and finally, concealment and comfort techniques with John and Sarah Hauptman of Filster Holsters. I'm not going to deep dive into each of those classes, but instead I'll just highlight two main ones. Originally, I was supposed to be taking a live fire class during Craig's experiential learning lab, but I decided that it was high time that I finally just expose myself to the scenario-based training that he would be offering during that block. So I showed up, plop down in the grass and brace myself to watch some lucky ducklings uh, make really hard decisions and probably get hit with some munitions. Uh, but little did I know that Craig would actually be selecting his students based off these sole criteria that of course they were willing, uh, but specifically that they had never taken any of his coursework or experienced scenario-based training at all. So, I fit the bill <laughs> and ended up being one of those lucky ducks myself. Honestly, I get nervous and kind of amped up even thinking about it. But uh, before going into that scenario, we were not really coached. Uh, we were supposed to respond to the scenario the best we could uh, with the tools we already had uh, and the information that we were able to kind of gather during this scenario. Uh, we were given a protective helmet and a sim munition gun carried appendix. I think it was a Glock 17. Uh, and going into that scenario, I knew two things. Things. Uh, I was going to be walking a coworker to her vehicle. She did not feel safe going by herself because she was going through a nasty divorce uh, and there had been a restraining order put in place. So going into the scenario, I told myself to be as calm as I could 
to interact with my coworker as normally as I possibly could and to try as hard as I could to expect that nothing would go wrong because I wouldn't expect anything to be going wrong in the real world. Well, in fact, it went wrong. So long story short, the husband ended up showing up. He was angry, but somewhat in control. Uh, my coworker, however, escalated the situation completely unnecessary and quite unreasonably, belligerently, it was ridiculous. Uh, and it occurred to me that I would not feel any obligation to fulfill my duty to escort this coworker to her vehicle in that situation. I probably wouldn't have signed up for it in the first place. Uh, and honestly, that her husband could probably handle himself from there. There was nothing I felt that I could really add to the scenario uh, or, or do anything to really help it. So I ended up just leaving. I ended up just wa running away uh, and essentially exiting the scenario because Honestly, if leaving a scenario that has really nothing to do with me is an option, I don't really see anything wrong with taking that opportunity. Now, I would really like to think that that's actually exactly how I would respond in real life. Uh, nobody was in danger. There was simply a husband and a wife having a ridiculous argument in a public place. But I don't know, I'd be interested to hear how you guys think you might have handled that situation with the limited information you have. The other class that I would like to highlight is John and Sarah's concealment and comfort techniques. Uh, if you don't already know, I work for Filster Holsters, uh, the company that John and Sarah own run together. And as their director of customer development, I create most of their concealment and product learning content and have been for a couple of years now. And as a result, I've become quite nerdy about all things concealment. I don't know if you can tell, but this class was definitely a lot of fun for me to attend. John and Sarah had me helping out during the hands-on portion of the class, but for the most part, I was able to just kind of be a fly on the wall and a student. The next event I attended was Sig Sauer's Rose Retreat in Nashville, Tennessee, which was less than four days days after I returned home from TACON. Honestly, that was just a crazy month. SIG actually invited me to that event free of charge, but as always, my opinions are my own. The Rose Retreat, as I understand it, is really designed to be a place where ladies from all walks of life and skill levels get together uh, and enjoy getting to know one another while hopefully taking new skills home with their rose pistol. I had the opportunity to attend the first ever Rose Retreat, so we were sort of kind of the tester group. Uh, and I will say the best part was meeting all of the ladies and getting to know all of them. Truly, everyone was an absolute pleasure to be around and it was an absolute joy to learn about them and what their journey with firearms had been thus far. Uh, some of the attendees hadn't touched a gun in over 20 years, whereas others were full-time firearms instructors. I felt like the SIG team did an absolutely outstanding job of facilitating our time together and creating an environment where really everyone felt welcome. And although the overall event was a really, really fun experience, there were definitely some major hiccups in the way that they went about running some of the classes. Uh, so we had a few major events at the retreat besides the social events. We had range time, classroom time, and the fashion show. Lena ended up running our range time and I thought she went about that really well. She broke us up into two separate groups, one with a little bit more experience and the other almost entirely novice. There were a few other safety officers there and I felt like they were really diligent and helpful throughout the range time. Um, although I was in the more advanced group, it was definitely structured more like a rehearsal of the basics. So if this retreat is something you've ever considered going to for yourself, I wouldn't necessarily go into it expecting to leave with really big leaps in your shooting skill, but again, more of a rehearsal of the basics. The hiccups I mentioned earlier really took place during the classroom portion when the SIG instructors were walking the group through the basics of how to take their P365 apart for cleaning purposes. Uh, and this was absolutely a super useful concept to teach because so many of the attendees were fairly unfamiliar with their firearms and what better way to familiarize somebody than to teach them how to clean it. The problem really came into play when muzzle safety wasn't really taught or enforced in that context at all. Students pointed real guns at themselves and each other. Now, I think it's important to say that I completely understand that there are certain times and in certain contexts where you're working on guns in a group and it can be almost impossible to maintain muzzle discipline. That said, many of these women had no other background in guns and what they'd likely take away from that whole scenario was that it would be completely okay to point guns at people when you're cleaning them. That I think is a potentially fatal lesson and it unfortunately kind of soured my experience with specifically the training environment at the retreat. In that same month, I also had the opportunity to take a private lesson with Tim Heron. 
Yes! <laughs> yes! 158! Okay! Uh, oh, yeah! I like hell that. yes! <laughs> I like it! Yes! <laughs> You guys have heard me talk about Tim on the channel before. He is hands down one of the best instructors out there right now for teaching pure shooting skill. I took my first class with Tim back in 2021 and took a whole lot away from it. You can watch the full class review, I think right here. And going into this private class, I knew I wanted to start taking competition a little bit more seriously. So I asked him if he could kind of get me spun up on a few things that I had little to no experience with. We ended up spending a few hours working on breaking down El Presidente into small individual digestible parts. And after that private, I also scheduled a meeting with Tim on Zoom to go over creating a dry fire plan. Uh, Tim had actually provided my husband with a dry fire plan a little over a year prior to that private that I did. So I knew that when I wanted to work on a dry fire plan for myself, I was going to go straight to Tim. Tim gave me some really solid footing to work with going into the rest of the year, starting to pursue competition more seriously. Uh, and that's pretty much what the next six months of 2023 were, was competition shooting. I ended up picking up all new competition gear, including a new gun. And after that, things really started to move along and I was able to make B class in July. That's another one you can watch the full video for up here. After that, we packed up and moved ourselves to Arizona in August, and I haven't really been able to get out to compete nearly as much as I'd like to here. Uh, and to tell you the truth, the matches here are so saturated. There's a huge community of shooters here, which is amazing, uh, but it can make it a little bit difficult to get into matches because they do fill up so quickly. So that's actually one of my goals that I'll mention here in a little bit going into the new year is just starting to get to know my shooting community here more because there are just so many of you guys uh, and I would like to get to know more people and also get to know the community better and show up to matches more frequently. Okay, the very last class I took in 2023 was a private lesson with Matt Hot from Simtac Consulting. Matt gave me my very first full overview and basic shooting skills with a shotgun. I got to shoot several different kinds, uh, got a feel for how the different types of recoil felt and got to become a lot more familiar with the different kinds of controls. You saw that third shot. You saw that third shot. Matt and his dad, Rob, are the guys when it comes to mastering a shotgun. So I knew that I wanted to go straight to Matt and skip the part where the shotgun absolutely rips my shoulder off. And sure enough, I did. Shoulder is still very much intact. And I walked away with a rundown on the basics that I could then take home and work on for myself. Shotgun is definitely a skill I would like to continue honing in more in 2024. Uh, and honestly, just long guns in general. And after almost six months off of competing with my pistol, I'm absolutely just itching to get back at that as well. So to summarize my training in the year of 2023, I can honestly say that I am not the shooter today that I was at the start of 2023. I'm significantly more confident, uh, accurate, and fast. Certainly don't get me wrong, I absolutely have not even come close to arriving, whatever that means, but I really did put in some work this year in terms of shooting skill, and I feel that it's really paid off. My husband likes to say that shooting is not fun, shooting well is fun, and I really feel like for the first time that I do shoot well fairly consistently and I'm genuinely excited to continue building on these fundamentals. Unless of course I decide to pick up a completely new platform and skill like shooting shotguns, then we get to start basically from ground zero. In 2024, I want to continue having fun shooting. Shooting skill is something that can take some time to hone in, but once you get to a certain skill level, it can start to feel a little bit mundane and a little bit like maintenance and maybe become less and less interesting. And I think it's really important as people who carry guns for the purpose of self-defense to continue uh, keeping our skill level up to date. And if it's not something that we find fun, it's either going to be very difficult to get ourselves to uh, stay up to date on current skills and tactics, uh, or we just won't do it at all. So that is one of the reasons that continuing to have fun with shooting is one of my goals in 2024. Uh, and then of course, getting more familiar with my shooting community in the greater Phoenix area. And then aside from shooting, I'd really like to gain more competence in the outdoors. I grew up camping and 
As a married couple, we've always kind of wished that we had more time to camp. Uh, and now that we're settled and my husband's not in the army anymore, we definitely do have a little bit more um, freedom over our weekends. So thanks guys for sticking with me this long, both through this longer video and just through the years of this channel. I started this platform back in 2020 uh, and I've just been blown away with the opportunities that it's brought my way. And even better, just the people that I've been able to meet because of it. And as a result, I'm really excited to get opportunities to meet more of you this year at events like TACON, uh, A Girl and a Gun, and hopefully at local matches.